Ooh, it's here. Good morning. Today, I'm proud to announce twins. But not quite. There are some subtle differences between these two Apple MacBook Pros that definitely, definitely makes me love one more than the other. So let's get straight into comparing a 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro with a brand new 16-inch 2019-2020 MacBook Pro. You know, when I was researching the differences between these two machines, trying to find someone with my specific needs, I couldn't. There wasn't a single review I could find that compared the 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro of my spec with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. It was only full of creators and YouTubers who are fortunate enough, of course, to get hold of the latest model every single year and comparing the, the top-of-the-line 16-inch model to the top-of-the-line 15-inch model. Meh. Before we jump into things, for those of you who don't know who I am, welcome. My name's Pete Matheson, business owner, gadget lover, musician, who loves to tinker with shiny, shiny toys. If you're new around here, I'd really appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button uh, down there somewhere, as it helps support the channel and boost the algorithms and all of those things. So, thank you. Today, we are comparing the 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro. This thing has the Intel i7 3.1 gigahertz quad-core processor, 16 gig of memory, and a one terabyte SSD with Radeon Pro 560 graphics. This is a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I bought in 2020. 2.4 gig, eight core Intel i9 processor can boost up to like five gigahertz, which is just insane. Uh, 32 gig of memory, two terabyte SSD, and the lower spec Radeon Pro 5300M, which has four gig of memory. So technically this is the lowest spec 16 inch MacBook Pro that you can buy today, but it has had then a spec bump on the processor, the memory, and the SSD. Retail price is about £3,600, I believe. Now, you do have the options, of course, to increase this spec further, which is uh, up to 64 gig of RAM, a 5500M 8 gig graphics card, and up to 8 terabytes of storage, which is actually a reasonable price, well, for 8 terabytes of storage, of SSD storage, wow. But is it worth upgrading from a 2017 15-inch model to the 16-inch model? Well, firstly, let's talk about my specific use cases. Since when I was looking around, I found it difficult to find someone who the way who used it the way that I did. You know, you've got you've got Linus Tech Tips doing all of his gaming and graphics tests, and all of the other YouTubers focusing on the performance with with, with just video. My typical use case is this: so I work on my Mac every single day of the year, pretty much. Most days I'll spend anywhere from from maybe 10 to 15 hours working on this thing. I have a ton of apps open at any one time. Microsoft Teams, Outlook, Chrome, uh, with around 15 or 20 tabs at any one time. Uh, Finder, Authy for my 2FA, Calendar, Messages, Soft Phone Clients, OneDrive, Google File Stream, OneNote, Reminders, uh, the Adobe CS Suite. I think that's pretty much about it. <laughs> And so I also use this for video editing my 4K footage from my Sony cameras for these videos. And for that, I use Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, bit of Lightroom, and a few other Adobe suite apps. So you can see it does help to have a decent amount of memory. Okay, so first up, differences. Aside from the obvious spec differences, what has changed from the two to three years that distances these two machines? Weirdly, it seems that Apple are actually starting to listen to the user feedback, so I can't quite understand what's happening here. It's unheard of that Apple listens to its user base, so, um, well, so here goes. Subtle differences. Okay, so the escape key is now a physical key and not a touch key. The power and the touch ID button, also separate physical button. Next up, of course, is the keyboard, the magic keyboard, which they have now reverted back to the scissor mechanism from their previous revolutional uh, butterfly mechanism. So basically we are back in the keyboard that they had in the 2015 MacBook Pro, I believe, uh, before they removed all of the ports. Actually, for those of you still with a 2015 MacBook Pro, if you've seen a 2016 MacBook Pro, then let me know in the comments as if the keyboard is just exactly the same, because I think it is. But other than that, yeah, it's a comfortable keyboard. It's easy to touch type on. One of my biggest takeaways from the keyboard is that it is so quiet in comparison. And one thing that annoyed me with the 2017 inch, what the 2017 inch? One thing that annoyed me with the 2017 model is that you can try as hard as you can to type quietly, but the keyboard just clicks. Uh, 
And so of course, one of the biggest bonuses with the new keyboard is that you should no longer suffer in silence with repeated keyboard issues that Apple know about is actually documented, which allows people to even, even out of warranty to go and get their keyboards replaced free of the charge. Free of the charge? Free of the charge. Free of charge because they know it's such a big issue with the older models. Charging wise, the 15 inch 2017 model comes with an 87 watt USB-C charger, whereas the 16 inch model comes with a 96 watt charger, which I pretty much end up using as the charger for all of my USB-C devices, my iPhone, my Sony camera, everything. So what does this mean for those of you who are docking into screens or docking stations? Because that's a really, really big question when you are docking these machines because they use a lot of power, you need something to be able to charge it. Well, I've been using this on a Dell 49 inch ultra wide screen, which provides 90 watts of power. And at home, I use the CalDigit TS3 Plus dock, which also had a firmware update in, I think it was late 2019, um, which increases the power output to 87 watts which in my experience is, is more than enough to keep the device fully charged, even when it's under like heavy load with video editing and exporting and, and those kind of intensive things. For my LG 34WK95U, you have to change the DisplayPort version to 1.2 to get to the full 5120 by 2160 resolution, and it outputs 85 watts of power, so absolutely fine. In terms of size, the 16 inch is of course marginally bigger than the 15 inch model, in every single way. But it will still fit in most uh, bags or backpacks, unless you're really trying to squeeze one that's already really tight fit on a, uh, on a 15 inch model. And of course, with size comes weight, which was a noticeable difference when holding the two, though I doubt you'll really notice if you don't have the two side by side. And of course, with that size and weight, you actually get battery. In fact, it's the largest legally allowed battery for domestic flights, 100 watt hours and the battery life is incredible. Of course, it depends on your, your typical use case, but in my typical use case, I've noticed the difference. You know, if you sat there using Premiere on a flight somewhere, it's gonna cane the battery still, it, it just will. So they fixed the keyboard, battery life's improved, performance is way improved, and the built-in audio is stunningly good for a laptop. For example, Jonathan Morrison interviewed Phil Schiller on uh, just, just using the, the built-in microphone, and it sounded incredible. And when it comes to speakers, they are ridiculously improved. For example, if you like having music on loud whilst you're working or you want to watch Netflix on, on your weekend getaway, then this thing will really, really impress you. It can deliver good, loud audio without distorting and with excellent bass response. And no, I'm not gonna play anything for you. I don't get why all the other reviews I've seen think that playing music, which is then being recorded from this microphone and then play back on whatever headphones or whatever speakers you're listening to would ever. The built-in camera, on the other hand, eh, not so much. From a perspective on what could be improved, well, on a circa four grand laptop, which is one of their pro ranges, you would have thought there'd be a few more pro features. I can appreciate that it isn't a size where you can add a full-sized USB port, but some additional USB-C ports would at least go down really well, at least. Uh, an SD card reader, I don't understand why this thing isn't being added back in. I guess when it comes to pro levels, like with the, the new Mac Pro and their five grand display, is it, I think, with a, with a one grand stand, which in my opinion is a truly pro device for the likes of Hollywood, but at the pro level, this is mostly aimed at. I would really have thought that an SD card slot would be incredible without having to find a flipping dongle and, and whilst we're at it, having an HDMI port built in would be really handy to include. So again, I'm not having to carry around a stupid collection of dongles with me for, for presentations. Also, after a bit of extended use, a comment around the fans. I read a lot online to say that the fans in here are quieter, but in my typical use, particularly when I'm editing videos, the fans actually sounded louder to me um, than on my last version on the foot on the 15 inch model um, and stayed on for a much longer time rather than just spinning up when I was exporting. But overall, this is a seriously impressive machine. I am more than happy to upgrade and, and actually once I factored in selling my 15 inch model, it's actually cost me a very, very small amount to, to actually upgrade. But with that said, for, for general day to day use for work, I have to say that I honestly could not tell you 
the differences between the two machines. I think that's because the, the 15 inch model I was using was already such a good spec. So there, if there are differences day to day, they'll only be really minimal and, and saving you like milliseconds at a time. That is everything in this review of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It'll be great to know in the comments below if you're thinking of upgrading to and, and how you found it if you have already made the move. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you did, subscribe if you're not already, hit the bell icon to be notified of our future videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, bye bye. I'm doing that nowadays. I think it's because I can't reach the camera. It doesn't really work. I could do like... Bye bye I guess I could just walk off like centre stage, if that's what you call it. Bye-bye. Oh, I did the whole video without switching my light on. How much better would that video have been if I had that light on? I've already had to send my wife home to get the second laptop because I thought it was already at work. Today is not my day. Don't drop it, don't drop it, Pete. Don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it.